A park ranger stands in a mowed, grassy area with a thick, wooded area behind the ranger. Beside the ranger stands a polished, dark gray granite monument that consists of a column on a pedestal and two-step base. The pedestal and shaft are inscribed with lettering and design. Atop of the column is a large five-point star while the monument measures 21 feet high. Hello everyone, my name is Ranger Bob Loomis. Thank you for joining us as we commemorate the 157th anniversary of the Battle of Chickamauga. On September 18th, Colonel Hans Christian Haig, seen in this photo, seated in a slightly turned position with a full head of hair combed back, a full goatee, wearing a dark blue uniform with two rows of brass buttons down the front, with white gloves holding a sword in his left hand, will write to his wife back in Wisconsin. My dear, once more I have an opportunity to write a few words. We have continued to march since I last wrote and are still laying here ready at a moment's notice for anything. The rebels are in our front and we may have to fight him a battle. If we do, it will have to be a big one. Do not feel uneasy for me. I am well and in, in, in good spirits and trusting to my usual good luck. I shall use all the caution and courage I am capable of and leave the rest to take care of itself. The day after Haig writes that letter, he will find himself here on the Vineyard Farm in the second bloodiest battle of the Civil War. 33 years old at the time of the battle, Haig was an immigrant from Norway. He was very progressive for his time thanks for his upbringing in the Muskego community in Wisconsin. They helped other Norwegian uh, immigrant families settle in Wisconsin. He was also an advocate for prison reform, an early supporter of the Republican Party, and a firm believer in anti-slavery values. He even harbored a fugitive who had broken the Fugitive Slave Act while he was warden of the state penitentiary. His community, his home, had made him who he was. When the war came, Haig was appointed colonel of the 15th Wisconsin Infantry and rose to the command of a brigade. On September 19th, the 15th Wisconsin, along with the rest of Haig's brigade, is located here, east of the Lafayette Road, on the Vineyard Farm. Into the woods behind the monument, Haig's brigade will advance twice and become heavily engaged with the Confederates. In each of these engagements, their losses continue to mount. They will continue to fall back to this position and reform along the east side of the Lafayette Road. Around 4.30 in the afternoon, Robertson's Texas Brigade will attack through the woods on this line, the third engagement that Haig's men will be in on that afternoon. Haig's, Haig's brigade will begin to break up underneath this withering fire. As he tries to rally his troops, a captain in Company D recalled, throughout all those hours of severe danger and exposure, Colonel Haig was ever prompt at his post, always courageous and self-possessed. Not once did he falter or swerve from his duty. His comrades fell at right and left. Still, he rallied on. Even after three assaults, Haig's steadfastness, his principles, everything that he had been taught growing up in his community, his home, would not let him leave this field. And while trying to rally his men, he is wounded at the location of the mortuary shell pyramid on the west side of the Lafayette Road. Pictured here is the front side of a three-sided pyramid made of stacked artillery shells and painted black. The pyramid sits on top of a stone foundation and on the front is an oval-shaped iron tablet painted blue with white lettering and white trim. His men will be able to get his body beyond Union lines, but he will perish on September 20th as a result of his wounds. He finishes that letter to his wife by saying, I can of course say nothing about the prospects of getting home, but as soon as this present campaign is ended, I am certain of being able to come. We have had such hard work marching over these mountains that we are entitled to some rest. I will call and see you the first thing you know, probably surprise you. My love to the children. Goodbye, my darling. Write often, but do not expect to hear from me very often till the campaign is over. Your own, Hans. When his wife did see him again, he was being laid to rest at the Norwegian Lutheran Church in Wisconsin, the highest ranking officer from Wisconsin killed during the war.